I was just writing in a journal of how many girls I had crushes on in my class and then showing them my journal. Um, so yeah, oh. I'm not the best at secrets. <laughs> and but. then you showed them? Jeez. Yeah. I, would, I, would just basically, yeah, I would just basically like, see, I wrote this today that I like you. And they would be like, that's great, Brian, go away. And I'm just still like, success. <laughs> yeah. Woo. I would be like, I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah. I, I did not write about my crushes. I wrote about like my dreams and how I wanted to like be something one day when I was 13. <laughs> I know you've done other interviews. My thing is, I look at those other interviews and say, that's great, that's for radio, that's for TV, that's for whatever. This is like a Tinder date, but the, the thing is, is you actually show up, so. <laughs> oh, fun, okay. So, so we- we kind of my boyfriend. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a thing where it's like, we know a little bit about you because we see the press, but on the other side, we're like, okay, what do people not know that maybe they would like to know? Right? Ask me all the weird things. These are my favorite <laughs> questions. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's start off the hop with a weird question is, have you ever fallen down in the shower? Oh, great question. Have I ever fallen <laughs> down in the shower? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Really? I can't remember okay. when. Yeah, <laughs> the floor is slippery sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you I can catch off. myself, but like I've definitely fallen. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a question. Record. For the record, I have not, but I, I was so close because when I was getting ready for this interview, I was like, imagine if someone has to come out and tell Robin, you know the host? He's actually like dead in the bathroom there. So he's not gonna he be able to shower. <laughs> yeah. I think I have, for sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Easy. I don't... <laughs> it, it, it feels like it's it, it should happen more often. So I feel like we gotta give ourselves right? a lot of a lot of credit for it's like you know when you get out and of the shower. I don't have like I don't have the mat at the bottom of the bathtub, so like my <laughs> bathtub's slippery. I don't have the the mat that it's supposed to stick to, because See, now, screw it. Sheldon Cooper of the Big Bang Theory would remind you to always have like do you have duckies or I can't remember what the other expression was, but it was either duckies or something that he wanted you to have. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Um, so let's, let's get into it a little bit of, you know, I, I did a little bit of research and I found out at say 13, you were writing songs. Um, what I like to tease people at, at like that age is when I was 13, I was just writing in a journal of how many girls I had crushes on in my class and then showing them my journal. Um, so yeah, oh. I'm not the best at secrets. <laughs> and then you showed them? Jeez. Yeah. I would, That's I would amazing. just, basically, yeah, I would just basically like, see, I wrote this today that I like you. And they would be like, that's great, Brian, go away. And I'm just still like, success. <laughs> yeah. Woo. I would be like, I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah. I, I did not write about my crushes. I wrote about like my dreams and how I wanted to like be something one day when I was 13. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't, I didn't write about love. I was never in love when I was younger. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. that's great. That that saves you a lot of like, you know, nights of crying in your pillow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like start dating until I was 18. 18. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. It was a weird concept to me. I was just like, aha, I don't, I don't know if I want to date somebody. And then people would ask me out and then I'd be like, yeah. And then I'd bail like every time. Um, so I just never got asked out because I bailed all the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it, it becomes one of those trends where it's like, that's Robin over there. Don't ask her out. She's just going to bail. It's like, okay, so you're telling me if we don't want ro Robin to come to something to ask her out. Good idea. <laughs> it's very true. It's very, very true. And I'll like, yeah, I just give the cold shoulder. I'm like, that never happened. I was never, you never talked to me. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I've I, grown I up since then. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now I just tell people no. Yeah, yeah. I just straight up tell them no. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, so like, tell us a little bit, because I know at 13, you said you're writing about not so much love, but like about your, your goals. Um, I'm assuming one of those goals would be to have your music play on country stations, both in US and Canada. I hope so. I mean, back then it was like this foreign concept to me. Like you, you have, to, I don't know, you just couldn't, somebody like me could not be on the radio. I guess that's just how I always grew up. I didn't even realize that songwriting was like a real job until I was 18. 
I just did it for fun. And then people were like, yeah, like people get paid to do this in Nashville. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> neat. <laughs> that seems fun. Yeah, um, for that. yeah. So I, like as a kid, I guess my dreams were just like to change the world or like me, myself and I was a big theme for me back then. So I don't know what she was thinking. And she was a sad kid. Sometimes I read some of my old lyrics. I was like, dude, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, and I guess it was just a way to get emotions out. Yeah. Screw well, boys. I have my I'll, own problems. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you out here because so I, I grew up with just getting into the media side of things. But there was a point when I was probably like 14 or 15 and like, you know, having high tops was a big thing. We had a skate park nearby. So there was I was never into skating. Just wasn't my thing. But I think I was like, oh, man, like there's a lot of people out there that play guitar. I could probably be a singer. So then I went home and like wrote a song. But I only had like maybe a line or two where it was like on a cold, dark night. I see you on a half pipe. And that's as far as I ever went with it. And I was like, I was like, that to me sounds pretty cool. It sounds pretty deep. And then when I listened to right? like, it, and then when I look back at it, I'm like, who are you for? Who is this for? You, you are not a skateboarder. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But I mean, you did get the imagery in there. Yeah. And you got the rhyme. <laughs> what more can yeah. people ask for? I mean, yeah. a little honesty, but that's yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, they, they can ask for a lot more. If I went into a meeting and I'm just like, I got a perfect song, Warner, here it is. And they'd be like, okay, that's like five or six words. I'd be like, it's working. They'd be like, how long have you been working on this? I'd be like 20 years. They'd be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> You'd be like, give me a little more time. Yeah, Let give me, me who I, am. I, I will figure it out. Um, but now, of course, I, I, I read up a little bit that just say, if you didn't get into music, um, I believe it was like, I think it was like math and science was like one of your like kind of go- Go tos. Yeah, I wanted to be like two more subjects, Robin. (laughs) I well, actually, no. Fun fact: math. (laughs) If you're good at math, usually you're good at music. The two go hand in hand. I don't know if you knew that. Did you know that? No, that's that's brand new information. There's lots of studies that show if you're good at math, you're good at music. Um, and I don't know why, but I think it's like the same part of your brain or something. But yeah, no, I wanted to be a shark behaviorist. I wanted to study sharks and marine biology and and save the sharks. But then I got sick and I couldn't get the grades and then I didn't get in, which is fine because it turned out great anyway. Um, <laughs> life turns out, man. But yeah, so I, I still think I can help save the sharks if I'm a musician, because maybe I'll have a platform. <laughs> Yeah, like there you go. Like you always see people like, you know, take a song that they've written and then do like covers or versions. There's your next one. I am I you know what? You can do these TikToks where you people tell you to write about like, you know, let's do a song for like Chevy, do it for Rav4. I want to see you do one for the sharks. Right? Yeah. When I see a great yeah. big white shark. Great. <laughs> Big great white shark. There we go. My bad. There you go. You think think it through. Well, you post it later. You tag me and be like, "This this asshole on this podcast told me to do this." No, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I think if people were like, "When I see a a big great white shark," they'd be like, "Girl, run!" <laughs> you know, hey, hey, I, you hey. don't see those every day in Canada. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be saying, "Sit there and sing to it." They'd be saying, "I'm running. I'm running away." Run. Yeah. But yeah. Like, yeah. See, this is, I like follow all of the, the shark behaviors too. And I see them like swimming with the great whites and I'm so jealous. They're just swimming right next to them. Like it's just the, the coolest thing. I love sharks. Sorry. I could go on and on. No, no, that's, no, it's fair. I mean, look, this is what we're here for. Like, you know, you get the, when you're on a country station, when you're on ET, they're going to come after you for music. We want, we want the shark. We want the shark. I'm not going to lie. I fit sharks into every conversation, <laughs> no matter what. Um, poor radio hosts are like, we're actually here to talk about F-150. I'm like, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Back to F-150 <laughs> after I've like ranted about sharks for five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you have just say like a 20 to 25 minute interview and it's like once they go back into their producers, they're like, uh, she was great. We loved her. It's like, okay, let's hear it. Okay. So five of that was F-150. The rest just sound like you let her talk for sharks. Who is in control of this interview? It's like, she was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, uh, my, what is it? Like a publicist? I don't really have a publicist, but the person who teaches you how to do social media was probably like, we gotta, we gotta rein this in. Yeah. But no, Warner loves my shark yeah. obsession. I, I feel like, you know what, in speaking of that, like I, I'm not with PR as much like I know I have the background with, so my communications degree somewhere in this closet, well, you can't see it, but it's in the closet getting full use. Uh, but 
it's like when they tell you like okay make sure you answer this this way answer that that way or like make sure you phrase this question i'm like how about get this off for size we just talk to them like normal people and let them give us a normal answer uh because it's it feels like to me it's in a world where it's like a hockey answer where it's like if you ask a player if they're down three nothing or up two one it's like yeah man pucks in deep uh we just gotta like you know come out in that third period and really challenge i'm like that's great now tell me what you really think uh crap <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that's always, yeah uh we have our like, answers all ready to go yeah yeah and i i hate that i just hate that i don't know i i appreciate like that you're the honesty um and i feel like that's the way that we should kind of be a little bit more in the world uh i also read of course and i've seen it on instagram as well you had like people that kind of influenced you in music same as with anyone you, everyone has someone that gets them into something otherwise why are you here <laughs> yeah but, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, I think it was like Casey Musgraves, uh, Sam Hunt. I actually seen the Sam Hunt cover and of you doing that, like the song. Uh, Breaking and I was like, easy. yeah. And I was like, interesting. Uh, I was like, I like it. I was singing along to it. And I was like, maybe get her to sing along on the show. But I was like, no, she has better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Fair um, enough. Yeah, I'd have to pull up the chords. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember how to play it. That's how uh, crazy my life is. I don't remember anything. <laughs> It, but no, they're like, you know, these are people that kind of inspired you to get into the music game, which I, I, I like. But like, tell me a little bit about it, because to me, and I'm giving you a compliment, hopefully in this sense, is, you know, when I hear some of your music, when I see some of these like hits that in, like when you post on Instagram of like snippets of other interviews, uh, I feel like there's a lot of, say, a Halsey, a lot of Pink, a lot of like Marian Morris in that, because it's like a, a lot of honesty but it's kind of like a brutal honesty where it's like people would be like, why would she say that? Like she's doing an interview, but then there's another part of you like, yeah, but why wouldn't she say that? Like, what do you want her to do? Like, right? do you want her to tell you like the song F-150 was about a, a truck that she just passed by? Like, no, she's being honest with you. Like, don't give her slack. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I mean, I think being honest just gets you farther in life because uh, I don't know, lies set you back and then skirting around the truth just makes you boring. And then just being honest is like super easy to do. It's so easy to just be like, yeah, this is how I feel. Um, <laughs> I mean, as long as you're not hurting anybody, I wouldn't be like, Hey, I, I don't like you because of this. I would just be like, I don't want to talk to you right now. I don't know. Something <laughs> like that. Um, and then, but yeah, I just think it's just like, you can live such a better life if you're just honest with everybody around you about how you feel. <laughs> yeah. I, as long I like as you're not being mean. Don't be mean. Yeah. yeah. I, I was going to say, like, let's let's cover that up with it's it's fair because honesty is key, but it's it's to the point where so in Newfoundland, it's just outright friendliness. It's just who we are. But I can imagine if you wake up in the morning and it's like, hey, Doug, I hate you. And then you walk down a little light street further around. It's like you didn't get me the mail yesterday. So. And then they're just like, wow, he is just so honest. I like his honesty, but why is he hurting me? I'm like, you either get hurt or, or you get lied to. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, 100%. I mean, I I think like there's there's like the people who are like, oh, I'm just honest. But really, they're just yeah. like dicks. And you're just yeah. like, ah, oh, you didn't. Like, you can be honest, but be nice about it, you know? And I think that's where the service industry comes in handy is like when people yeah. complain, you can be like nice, but you can also be like, but you're, I don't know. Like people will be like, this food was disgusting. I don't want to pay for it. And you're like, oh, like, I'm so sorry you feel that way, but you ate the whole meal. So <laughs> like, I don't know what you want me to do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm being nice about it, but I'm also being like, you're wrong, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I do it a lot of times. So on Instagram where I feel like for me in social media, like. I don't know. There's there's kids that grow up that are like on TikTok now that are probably like, you know, they're doing dances, they're doing their thing. And like, I don't know, I feel like I'm turning into like the old man that just yells at the moon or just like puts their fist up because like some of the things I'll see on social media, I'm like, why, why is this trendy? Or like someone will make a comment and just be like, I don't understand this. I'm like, that's cool. Like, I don't understand it either, but you don't see me getting mad about it. But in fairness, there are stuff that you will see on social media. Like the other time, that someone had posted on your thing of like, this is a weird, like, I'm not going to use the words, but it's like, you know, it, it, just a not nice comment. And I was like, okay. 
And all you have to do with some of these people is like, okay, but you're quoting Garth Brooks in your profile. And then he called me out. And I or was like, like the people who are like, uh, they slide into your DMs and they're just so mean to you. And then you go to their profile and it's like, live, laugh, love, be yeah. kind. You never know what someone's going through. Yeah. And I'm like, is this you? Um, I mean, my label just told me not to even engage with people. And, yeah. and, and that's what I do. I, I just, I don't have time. I feel like I, feel I get a lot of messages every day. I ain't gonna waste it on people who are mean. And then you and a bunch of my friends just respond to that guy and he blocked me. So <laughs> yeah, it's, you it's, know? Just, it's it's one of these things like, so I, I find there's two different aspects of it. And I like how like they're kind of like the media or like your label is kind of like teaching you the right way. Um, because like, again, once you get more just say, and I'm not saying this like in a rude way, but it's like, you know, once you get to say more famous, more well-known, like then it's kind of like, okay, say what you want at me, whatever, like, what's the difference? Like I look at someone like, um, Mariana's trench. So another good Canadian band and Josh Ramsey, uh, we had like the, I think it was like, uh, one of the, yeah, it was like Ian Castleman from the band on in, a, in another episode. And he basically said, people will go at Josh all the time on Twitter. And he just like burns them right back. And I'm like, okay, that's even worse because the not respond is one thing, but getting burned. And then you have like, say 20,000 people that like that and reshare it. It's like, I'm deleting my comment because I don't want people to know I just got burned by an artist. Yeah. Uh, so it's, that's, where um, feel, that's where I feel like it could come in handy with you. In another few years, when someone calls you out, you'll just be like, check out this guy. And then it's like, yeah, what a loser. And then he's going to be like, I got to delete this. I'm getting burned. <laughs> and I think with those, though, you got to plan them really well. Like, yeah. like you don't want to come off as if you care because that's what they want. They want to yeah. think that they affected you when honestly, I mean, my, it might have affected me for like the first bit of when my social media was growing really fast and people were commenting all the time. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. But now yeah. I'm kind of used to it. I'm like, ah, oh, people's mean, but they're probably just sad with their life. Like my life's great. I don't care what <laughs> user 00067582 says. Um, That's but, me. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. My bad. Well, stop being mean. No. Um, <laughs> but like, then there's people like Casey, not Casey Messers, Kelsey Ballerini, who somebody was like, yeah tweeted her like, Kelsey, I always hear your hole in the bottle song and I'm so sick of hearing it all the time. She's like, you're probably hearing it so much because it's top five at country radio right now. <laughs> and like, she, she wasn't mean. She wasn't like, yeah. hey, you're being rude. Don't, don't say that. She's like, oh, you're probably upset that you hear it so much because I'm top yeah. five. And that's just like such a classy way to handle a hater. And it's um, just, it's I'll learn that, that eventually. Yeah, it's like, I think it's something that I guess when you, over time you develop, like I know with me, it's kind of being like a sarcastic bit of an, I guess an ass sometimes on social media. Like if someone like, I don't know, like you're in someone's Instagram or you comment on something, they're like, what do you know? It's like, you've got like a hundred followers or something on your uh, like podcast. And it's like, oh, that's supposed to be a shot at me. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's like 99 more than you have or something. And then they're just they're like, oh, I don't like that. He got mad at me. I'm like, what are you talking about? You came at me. Right? Um, this is why I don't even engage. <laughs> um, what was the other thing? I don't know. People just come at you for random things. And then Warner was kind of teaching me, like, if you engage, so either if you block them right back or, um, in, I don't know, delete their comments. So if you delete their comment, they're like, ha, 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 she deleted my comment. I got to her. Yeah. If you block her, they're like, ha, 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 she blocked me. I got to her. And then yeah. if you DM uh, just being like, Hey, that's don't say that they'll screenshot and they'll be like, ha ha, I got to her. So they're just like, don't even engage. And, and they're always like, people will fight your battles for you and just let them because yeah, yeah well, you don't you. want them thank, to win. Yeah, th thanks for that. Thanks for that. I, I was the one that, 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 that helped on that one. Yeah, I, I exactly. No. <laughs> exactly. Um, and he deleted, deleted, he deleted it fast too. Yeah, and then yeah. he watched me. So yeah. I don't know. I just, I just think they're probably sad. Like my life's great. You can call me whatever you want. I know what I am. So <laughs> good luck with your small ego and insecurities. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. I, I, I just think it's interesting because we're like a group of kids. So you're about what, 25? Yeah. So like 25, 29, like we're kind of a little bit into the social media world. Like I know like it's got, I don't know if it's necessarily our generation, because I know for us, we kind of grew up, say, with MSN, Facebook, Twitter. <laughs> this crowd's growing up with, like, TikTok, Instagram. Everything. Yeah, and it's, like, at their disposal. And I feel bad for them because 
I guess to some extent, like we've been kind of discussing this is like, we're a little bit mature. I'd like to think that like, you know, we know, Hey, just don't ignore it or like not respond to it. Cause we grew up in a high school environment. You grow up in this, but like kids today that are in that high school environment are getting it just say in high school, not like now during COVID, but when just say they, they were, and now you're getting it on social media from like someone in the States to UK where it's like, why are you dancing? You suck. And it's like, okay, that's one thing for your brother to say, or someone in your class to say, but this person in the UK to tell you you suck and you take like you know, they're taking that like to heart because they're yeah. not fully developed of like, this person doesn't matter. Like I'll get like stuff when I post on just say Facebook or someone and they'll send me a message and be like, like you're a loser <laughs> or something. And I'll be like, okay, coming from someone in Ireland that I'm never going to meet. Okay. Whatever. Like, if you don't like it, that's okay. It's different. If a classmate's like, look at this guy, look what he turned into. And you're like, okay, a little bit hurtful, but still I'm, I'm going to avoid it. But to them, they don't know that. Like they treat it the same way as a person that sits next to them in a classroom to a person in the UK saying they suck. I'm like, I feel bad because then they like delete their Twitter. They'll delete stuff. They'll go into depression. It's like, Hey, it's okay. Maybe just it's, and you can't even tell them like, don't do, don't do a TikTok. It's just like, Hey, just learn to ignore it or learn to just try to I Lock just like out. try to understand that those people are way more sad than you. If somebody has to say something mean to somebody on the internet to make themselves feel good about yeah. themselves, like that just shows how sad they are. So, I mean, I think we, I was taught through like those emails that are like, if you don't send this email in seven hours, your family's going to oh. be cursed or so. And I was like, yeah. sweating back then and i was like oh my goodness this is this is real and my mom's like that's not real like yeah. don't, what are you talking about so i feel like kids these days i mean yeah people are saying mean things to each other and it's like if you if you are hurt i totally understand but at the same yeah. time just know that they're a sad little person on the other side of the world who just yeah. feels like saying you suck when yeah. they don't even know you and that just means they're probably not great Actually, Robin, you just reminded me of something. I have to send seven of my friends an email right now telling them that, you know, if I don't send it. No, no. Yeah. Back from like 2001. Yeah, yeah. You don't send it. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I, I have to check in on some of my friends to make sure they're still alive. But now they're probably gonna be like, geez, that's like 20 odd years ago. Why are you bothering now? I'm like, I'm sorry. I never got around to it. I hope everyone, I hope everything's okay. Um, yeah. I hope you didn't get your seven years of bad yeah, luck. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, you know what, personally on my part, I think someone didn't send it and I do have seven years bad luck. So I feel like going down and they're like, Hey, did you send that on my behalf? They're like, of course not. I'd be like, okay, that explains a lot of things that's going on right now. Um, <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about, cause I, it's funny to me. Cause you know, with boots and hearts, I think 2016, you were, I, I, I believe it was like the runner up. Um, I was top three. I was, yeah, I was, so I was third. Everyone says I was the runner-up, though. So I'm like, I, All think, right. I think you know what? It's fair because in the in the category when I was looking it up, it, it could have said runner-up to runner-up. I'm like, why don't you just call it number three? Like you don't do like right. It was one, like a top, top three. It was top three, and then they picked one out of the three. So there was no yeah. real second. Oh, I don't think that's that's like a horrible way of doing things. Here's your number one. Here's your runner up. Here's the other two. Up. Yeah, yeah. Here's the other two. Don't you'll never remember those two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but tell me a little bit about that because I know with you know Boots and Hearts it's, to me is you know in Ontario of course you have like the Country Music Awards of Ontario. You have all these different platforms. But do you remember some of those acts that are at 2016? And to imagine maybe someday, like in the future, you could be headlining a Boots and Hearts. Oh, I hope one day. I hope one day I just play on the stage without being in a competition. Um, right. No. <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. Who did I play with? Um, I was with Vanessa Marie Carter, who had a show at Boots, and same with Jesse Gold. Kelsey Main was in there, and she's played Boots and Hearts. My friends Jess and Tay were going to play Boots and Hearts um, until COVID hit. So, I mean, I would love to play Boots. I feel like I'm one of the only people who were in the 2016 competition who didn't, who hasn't played yet. So. Put me in, coach. I want to <laughs> <I> want <play> <laughs> boots. Yeah, it, you know what? Because I think it's interesting because some of the acts that we have on, and, uh, you know, I'll name drop a few. I'm just going to fix this screen because I thought that would look better. But it, uh, a few of the ones that we've had on that have either done Boots and Hearts or I know that you kind of know, which is interesting because when I first started doing this stuff, I was like, you know, all gung-ho of like, let's get 
the top of like the acts in here. Let's like, let's get the weekend. Let's get Drake. Let's get Bieber. But I find as you get older and maybe just doing the podcast, it's like, okay, like let's give Canadian talent kind of a voice or like something that they don't really get a lot of. Cause yeah, everyone's going to look for a Drake or a, a Bieber, but I mean, we've had Kira Isabella on, we've had, uh, Ali, we've had Sarah Wicked. Oh, I just and, wrote like, with Ali last night. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've seen the clip and I was like, I, I've you know, I think I sent her a message. Sometimes she comes and goes with checking it, so I was like, whatever. Uh but yeah, I'm the same. Uh, Messages yeah, yeah. are hard. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I messaged Sarah and like asked her, like, oh, we're gonna have you on. And I was like, What kind of things do you want me to ask? And she's like, Oh, just have fun with her. I was like, Oh, okay. So the same thing that we kind of did with your interview. She's like, exactly. And that's yeah. like that is not how she talks at all for people that listen, but that's just my impression. Uh <laughs> But yeah, like, so some of these people that you've kind of uh, done shows with or have, or like interact with or have done Boots and Hearts, I mean, have they kind of given you uh, like any advice or any kind of uh, teaching elements along the way? Because I know you're all kind of in the same little, uh, pun intended, bubble of like, you know, trying to figure it out, get it all together. But like, I guess along the way, sometimes they give you a little bit of Timbits, Canadian reference of advice. Um, I don't know. I feel like people who give me advice, uh, Leah Daniels, do you know her? I, I've, I've think we stumbled across her. I, I, I haven't gone full research. She's a Canadian that. artist and she's my neighbor. And I feel like if I ever wanted advice, I'd, I'd go to Leah. I keep my circle very small when it comes to people I ask questions to. Um, and, and, and Leah's one of them. And then my two managers are who I usually go to for advice. I mean, if I need to like work with somebody. Yeah. I reach out to Sarah and Allie and everybody and I write with them, but I feel like when, when it comes to advice, I like to do things my way. Fair um, enough, yeah. but also like ask Leah what she thinks <laughs> I should do. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's my own little tight little circle. I, I keep it, I keep it small. <laughs> I feel like that's like a, a very, um, I don't know. It's an interesting answer to me because you get some people that are very like, I guess there's micromanaged and then there's like, uh, macro managed where in the sense of they'll like go to their whole team and be like, I'm thinking about doing this. And you get like 20 odd different opinions and then say, like, okay, let's take a vote. Yeah. And that's, I feel like the same with even doing anything in life, especially with this podcast. So I'm like, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it that way? I'm like, how about I fail? And then like, I'll fail. And then, you know, I'll learn from that. Let's do it that way. They're like, okay, good luck with that. I'm like, okay, break. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather just like do things my way i guess like yeah i just i believe in letting like my work speak for myself so i'll write the song i'll record it i'll do what i think is right with the advice of like one or two people because i i hate too many cooks in the kitchen in real life and in and in the music industry like i hate when people are in the kitchen with me get out um so yeah i just too much advice i'm i just shut down so i just pick certain people to ask certain things and then I do what I think is correct with the information I've been given. That's 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 fair. That's a very like thought out answer and a good one. And then the if floor. I fail, it's never like a, oh, I failed because I listened to this person. It's like, no, I yeah. failed because I failed. Yeah. Um, and I think that's way, I'd rather fail because I failed, not because I listened to the wrong advice. 100%, every time. That's good. We should like, <laughs> you should put that on a shirt or a pillow. <laughs> yeah maybe on like a wall sign that a mother yeah, hangs in her kitchen yeah, just yeah yeah exactly just put it like when you're going into like a sports locker room it's like i fail because i fail it's like coach i don't think this really fits the team motto here it's like isn't it supposed to be one succeeds we all succeed yeah no scrap it this year you fail it's on you it's like tough coach <laughs> yeah tough yeah, yeah. but i mean uh, yeah i'd rather hold myself accountable than be like well i'd rather punch myself for me doing something wrong than like punch myself for somebody else doing something wrong that's fair. I, that's a good, that's a good analogy. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit too about, of course, I, I'd be totally blind if we didn't mention in some aspects, but like, you know, the, the song F-150, uh, you know, big hit doing well, of course, Canada, US, worldwide, I, I would assume. I know TikTok reaches all over the world and, and apparently that's big on TikTok as well. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit because my interest of it is, you know, I know people will ask you, of course, like, how'd you come up with the song? Where did it come from? And I get it. Uh, you've mentioned, it, of course, it's about like an ex-boyfriend. Uh, my favorite part that I think is kind of pure honesty was in one of your clips. You're like, I can even give you his uh, 
is license plate. Yeah. And you oh, it I like can't that. believe I said that. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, why is my filter? <laughs> Oh, I get um, it. Listen, listen, you're going through a, like a, a breakup. You kind of want to like, fuck it. Like, let's, let's talk about it or let's, let's do this. But, um, but, but my favorite part that I do enjoy about it is with any song, it, you, you hear it a few times. You're like, okay, I get it. I, I like it. You hear it another few times. It gets like entrenched in your brain, but you know, take me through that process. Cause I know you posted, I think back in January or early February that it's been out for a year. So like, I'm assuming with anything, it takes time to get traction. It takes time for people to notice, but I feel like, and I could be dead wrong, but I feel like right now people are noticing it, even though it's been out for like a year. So like what goes through your mind at first when you put out a song and at first you're like, geez, I think it's good. Why isn't it getting the plays or the traction? Well, all honestly, I was, I was an independent artist with zero budget because I was working the service industry and it was my best single. I was so happy with F-150. Um, I think it got like 20,000 streams in the first month, which is like the best any music I've ever released has done. So I was happy with F-150. I was stoked. I was ready to move on to new music when um, when TikTok got a hold of it and made it go viral. Um, so what was the question? Sorry, my blood sugar is high. No, 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 that's to- <laughs> fine. I, was just, I was just more or less saying like, you know, because like it's the patience, I guess, sometimes of waiting. Like if yes, you put out- Yes, like, right. Like, What's it like- feel like now that it's so famous a year yeah. later? Yeah, so I uh, we we decided that we were in it for the long run because I had zero marketing budget and I was just going to tell the story the best I could with social medias and um and it worked, you know? I was in it for the long haul. I knew that things don't happen overnight and if you think things happen overnight, you're very 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 wrong. Um so I I I just kept going. I just kept promoting it as much as I could and then it caught and then once it catches, it's like an avalanche. So um, I'm just so happy that it finally caught its right wings. It's like you have this little baby and you're so proud of it no matter what it does. And then and then all of a sudden it catches its wings and it flies away. And you're like, why? Thank you so much. <laughs> you're, you're, no, you're, you're, and you're, you're like, I'm just proud of it. You're like, come back. Let me love you more. Don't come away. <laughs> like, yeah. come back. Um, I, I, I do want to mention this as well, like not in the, the downward spiral kind of way, but it, it's just interesting because, you know, when you don't really get to see this a lot because like, let's say, we're not a podcast that will have like, just say a Britney Spears or a Christina Aguilera <laughs> on. So it's almost like, I mean, hopefully one day, but uh, you know, th- their success, of course, you look at like one song and then you see them rise. It's like with any, like any band, any artist, you get one song and it starts to trend and rise. And you're like, okay, I, I kind of hope they stick around. Like I have bands from the nineties I'm listening to. And some of the Canadian ones, like, I, I feel like you might know some of these, but like soul decision. Um, I think there's like B44. Mm-hmm. Like again, no, no offense if you don't. Uh, they're way. I'm just. I don't think they're country. No, in that's country? fair. No, they're not. No, they're yeah. not. Yeah, I didn't uh, listen to. I didn't listen to anything but country in the '90s. <laughs> but like, but so like they they had like these hit songs, and you're like, okay, I hope they continue, and then all of a sudden they just kind of dip down, and the next song doesn't do so well. Now, I guess my question to you would be like, does that ever enter your mind? Like, okay, my next song, it does it have to be better than F150? Can it be on peak? Or is it almost like we're, we're on the trend? People are noticing what I'm doing. So let's just continue and see where it goes. Like what kind of mindset do you have now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard when your art is what is trying, like, yeah, it's hard to monetize art, I think. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, me and my managers are just like, if we're proud of it, then that's all that matters. If, it, if nobody listens, then nobody listens. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I'll listen to my music because yeah. I love my music and... I make it for me and I make it how I want to hear it so that if nobody else listens, at least I'm listening. Um, There is like the nerves. Obviously I want my songs to do just as good as F-150, but beggars can't be choosers. You know, it's the business. You just have to do your best and hope for the best and, and, and try not to stress about it. Yeah, no, that's fair. Cause I I, I just always thought it was interesting. I I don't mean to put pressure on you with that question. It's just like, you know, cause you're, you're an act that's on the rise. So it's like, it's a good time to ask it. Cause like, let's say if we had John like two or three years later or two or three months later, and you got two or three other songs, like your, your answer might not be as, I guess, I'm not saying that you're not honest, but it might be like, Oh yeah, of course. Like all these songs did well because of course they did well. And then you're like, Oh man, like, okay. But like, what was she thinking at the time when like one of the songs was doing well? And then, you know, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. Cause I, I do like that answer. Um, the other thing I want to kind of dive into here with you is you talked about 
growing up, you were only listening to, say, country music. Now, we went over a few of the people that kind of inspired you. Um, but, like, for example, like, women, per se, now in music, like, who were some of the ones that kind of paved the way? Because, like, for me, I grew up with, say, with Garth Brooks, Tim McGraw. Uh, once I think about when it comes to women in music, that really kind of, like, I was just sat to my seat. Like, I'm not leaving the room. I don't care if someone's sitting going, like, Brian, why are you listening to this? Like, Martina McBride, Faith Hill, uh, Reba. But I feel like today's generation has more of like, say, Carrie Underwood, a Taylor Swift. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of the other ones that could be out there. Like maybe even like Lady Antebellum. I, I like Lady A, but like, you know, if that, these are the ones that are coming out now. So to you, who were like some of the women per se that you were like, oh man, I want to do that just like they are. Or I'm not leaving this seat. I'm watching this performance. Yeah, my my favorite women growing up were Shania Twain, Faith Hill, Martina McBride, and um, Sarah Evans. Did I say Sarah Evans? No, that you just said Sarah Evans. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, no, I, I loved I loved them growing up. They were always on the radio. Women dominated the radio back. I I grew up on them. A little Tim McGraw here, a little Diamond Rio there. But yep. no, I, I loved the ladies. And I think even when I was growing up, Keith Urban was coming in and Blake Shelton was just starting when I was young, Miranda Lambert. So they yeah. were all they were all like new when I was like 14. Um, and it was great. I loved them. I mean, anyone who writes good lyrics, I'm stoked about. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fair question because I, I, I want to ask this. And I usually ask this a lot with the, the country acts that we have on too. But like, you know, we're, we're similar to age, maybe four years in the difference. Uh, but like when, when I was growing up and probably you could speak to this as well, but like country music to me was like, as much as you kind of label it as country, it was either, it had a twang, it had like a message. Um, not saying that songs don't today, but it seems like a lot, you, you would never see say back in the day, a Tim McGraw team up with, um, I don't know, like a Backstreet Boys or like a Garth Brooks team up with Justin Timberlake. But now it seems like it's all intertwined. Like you do see like a Florida Georgia line team up with like a Nelly and you're kind of like, okay, how do I feel about this? And then when the music comes out, you're like, damn straight. All right. Whatever you want to do, as long as it's a great song. Uh, like, how do you think it's kind of changed? Do you like, like that's a little bit more pop country or are you more or less the old kind of soul country. Yeah, it's funny because like when I was growing up, like Shania Twain did a country album and a pop album of the same songs. There and like, go. I don't think she got backlash for that, did she? Um, and nowadays, if a girl does a pop song, it's like, ah, she's leaving country music. Um, but no, I mean, I was raised on pop country. I feel like 90s is very pop country, whether people want to admit it to themselves or not. Um, I will never admit that. No, I'm only kidding. Yeah, well, <laughs> people are like, bring it back to traditional. I didn't even listen to Johnny Cash or or anybody when I was growing up. So um, I was I was a '90s country baby for sure. And to me, it's always sounded like pop, sounded poppy. And I love I, crossovers. I, I give it credit because you know what? Like, we've had this debate with a few before. Like, so there's comedians out there. Uh, I think it's like Ron White is a comedian that will say. Uh, people would walk up to him and be like, how do you not like Garth Brooks? He's country and rock and roll. And I'm like, all right, like fair, fair assessment, I guess. And then it's like, but we had Shania. We had like Shania Twain that like, yeah, some songs were country. Like you hear the twang at the beginning. You're like, oh, this is country. And then when she starts giving you like these powerful, like I guess messages in the song for women of like, hey, you know, it's okay if he's an asshole. You can go, like you can leave. Like you're the woman here. And it's like, I'm I'm a man listening to this song. And I'm like, yeah, damn right. Like, yeah. And I'm like, wait, wait. I'm talking about my own gender here. Like, okay, but yeah, screw him. Like, do what you got to do, woman. Hundred uh, percent. And I yeah. feel like, even like, if you are a man, heck yeah, support women <laughs> leaving shitty men. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not like they're hating you. No, I think exactly. a lot of people are like, it's a man hating song. It's like, no, no, it's an a hole hating song. Yeah, exactly. And you just need to do. Like, do you see yourself in that song? Why are you so yeah. insulted right now? Yeah. Um, it's like, it's like, yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, It's like, whose bed has your boots been under? It's like, all right. Like some people be like, why, who gives a, like, who gives a shit? I'm like, I, I kind of do. It's like, I kind of care if she's being treated on. Yeah. yeah I kind of <laughs> care. 
Like, yeah, yeah. You're like in a, in a room of people where it's like, this song sucks. You're just like, okay, over. I, I kind of care. I hope she's you know, I okay. I don't hate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting to me because you get those people that will say, and, and I guess at one point I was one of those people that was like when Taylor Swift was country. Oh, man. Like, I, I'm young. I was young, maybe 14, 15, because she's, I think, a year or so older than me. But I was like, damn you, Taylor. I'm like, you could have been the next Faith Hill. This could have been your genre. This could have been like, you could have been the queen to this. And you just go and leave it for pop because why? It's trendy now. You don't think that country and, music can be good. And yeah. uh, then years later. You wanted like, to do it. <laughs> yeah. And then like at the same time while you're trying to rip Taylor a new one, it's like, Brian, do you? I'm looking at your iPod here. It's like, you do have blank spaces and 22. And I'm like, Sh shut up. It's she, she yeah. should be country. <laughs> and um, I, I, I love how Taylor was like, I just want to keep reinventing myself. Like Taylor Swift doesn't have an album that's the same as the last, which I think is yeah. other than her two new ones. But yeah, I think, it, I think she was smart. I was at, at the time I didn't understand cause I was country and I was like, why is she changing? Yeah. Uh, and now looking back and especially being a female in the industry now, I'm like, dang that girl was smarter than all of us it's like yeah. she just she was she's smart she she's a business and she knows it and she she did that i yeah, think it was genius it's, it's interesting to, to me just like getting back we'll get back to it a little bit here but it's like you know taylor i think made the, like to me shania was the one that kind of made that but it's like she just didn't get the credit because of course at the time there's no social media to really justify of giving her like tearing her a new one for it where there is now with taylor but like you know, Miley Cyrus can hop back and forth between, oh, I'm a bad girl now to like, oh, I'm wholesome and let's do some country. And I'm like, I don't care what you do. Like you're growing up in the media. Like they're going to pick you apart like they did to anyone. But, you know, she has a great voice with country. She can make killer songs and pop. So like whatever, as long as you. And I think Miley rocks rock music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's just good. I Whenever I picture Miley, I picture just a really good person. Yeah. Um, who had to grow up in, in the media and she crushed it. I think yeah. personally, I, I, I watched an interview with her and she's just so like chill and down to earth. And she's like, nothing affects my body and nothing affects my, affects my spirit. And I'm like, dang, she's cool. I, I picture Miley as Hannah Montana first, which is sad because it's like, you know, she's come a long way, but I feel like, you know, if I ever seen her in person, I'd be like, I feel like it would slip out. I'd be like, Hey, Hannah Montana. Oh, I'd be like, shit, I mean, hey, Miley. And she'd be like, how old are you? I'd be like, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> I would be, I, I see her as Miley. So that's funny yeah. that you see her as Hannah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just because growing up on Disney down here, it's like, you know, it, it was the go-to. I've watched like Radio Free Roscoe. It was like, it was, you know, That's So Raven. And like, it's just ingrained in my mind. Like, I, I assume that if I seen her in person, it would come out Miley. But there's always that fear of, if she's going in through a blonde phase, I'd be like, hey, it's Hannah Montana. Oh, wait, no, Miley, sorry. Uh, yeah. like, totally, totally misunderstood. It's like if I see Hilary Duff, I'm sure I would probably call her Lizzie McGuire. Not on purpose. It just slips out. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair yeah, not, enough. Not taking anything away from you. It's just what I know you from. Um, yeah. But let's get into a little bit of, um, I guess, a little bit of fun here. Because I, I know, I think you said in an interview, I could be wrong. But I, or maybe it's something that I dreamt up, which would be a weird dream. But. Who knows? Uh, you know, it was like the Carrie Underwood song before he cheats. And I think you had referenced it or maybe again came in a dream that your song of F-150 was like, OK, this is what happens after he cheats. Like, this is what you write about once he cheats. I think it was a dream. I haven't said that before. Um, some Somebody commented, did a comment that was like, um, oh, this is like. Carrie Underwood hit the bat so that Robin could light the fire kind of thing. Maybe that's where it's from. I think, yeah. I think that was it. I haven't said actually anything comparing it to Carrie Underwood, but somebody did say this is like uh, before he cheats music video on. Um, there you steroids. go. Maybe, yeah. There you go. Maybe, yeah. That, that's okay. Now it's kind of coming. I back think somebody commented it and I was and like, I thought, Carrie walked so I could run. Yeah. Like, and I think that's very kind of, refreshing or like very up the alley because it's like you know she's singing about like okay like maybe next time before he cheats and then you're like no 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 he's done it let's let's fucking solve this issue or let's get to this so yeah i i, I like that but yeah it must have been a comment but for some reason it's like it does seem to me i was like oh she definitely quoted it but you're right it, it could be like and there you go there's the impact of social media sometimes where it's like oh. 
Yeah. Someone writes, someone makes like a really sick comment and it sticks with you. Yeah. yeah. I hope, I hope no one does that on my podcast, like makes a comment and like later on in life be like, you actually said this on your podcast. They're like, actually, no user Somebody one, two, three, five. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> user one, two, three, four, five said that. And now I have to defend that user. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but explain a little bit, I guess, cause I, I, I do find it interesting with the way that I guess social media is now and with the honesty um, do you find at times that you feel like you have to dial it back a little bit or do you more or less feel like, okay, I'm just going to say it and whatever happens happens. Cause I know when you're saying like the label sometimes is kind of telling you like, they're not like telling you not to say it, but maybe gearing it a different way, which is, you know, smart marketing and smart on their end. But do you ever feel at times, do you like go like, oh, maybe I, I shouldn't have said that, or maybe I should like tone this down a little bit. Um, I don't think I do that. Like I, I'll never post unless I'm positive. It's what I want to say. And yeah. me and my managers will talk about pros and cons of how to say and, and what to say and what the impact will be. Um, but yeah, no, I, I never like regret anything I put out. Yeah. Not yet at least. Not, not yet. Like not yet. Um, yeah, no, I just think it's interesting because it, it, you know, we're in a world and, and you know, I'll say it to myself kind of in, in this aspect, but like a lot of people are being a little bit more honest with social media. And like at one point, social media was kind of like a platform of, hey, this is what I'm doing. I hope you check this out kind of thing. And we never had this voice. Like, can you imagine like the, the, for us, and I, I'm sure you can kind of relate to it, but like MSN was kind of our go-to voice where it's like, hey, there's like five of my friends online. And then you'd have like your username and then it came up to a bottom point where a lot of people would just quote music lyrics or like some kind of live, laugh, love. But like that became almost like your outlet for like your 50 odd friends to be like, okay, Brian's not well because look at that status that he wrote or like this sub status. But now it's like, you can go on social media and vent or like say something in the moment. And then people are like, oh, hell is going to break loose on this one. It's like, and you're oh, like, see, oh, I'm the opposite. Five minutes. <laughs> I am. Um, I do not post anything um, that's like emotion geared. Like if I'm sad or something, I go to my mom. I don't post on an Instagram story because I, I don't need people DMing me about something that they probably don't know anything about. I like <laughs> again when I'm talking about inner circles, I really do just yeah. stick to my inner circles. Um, and like again, people people post on social medias and they're like, it's okay if you feel this way, I feel this way too. And I think that helps people and I think it helps pe um, the person posting too. For me though, yeah. if I were to post something like that, it would like do the opposite and, and it would make me worse and my mental health worse and I just know that about myself. So I just, um, yeah, I just don't post things when I'm angry, I don't rant on social media. Like to me, if I'm, if I'm gonna rant about something, I call my mom or I call my boyfriend and I rant. Um, but yeah, no, social media is just not the place I turn to, to do that. And I respect that it's for some people, but it's just yeah. not for me. It's just not a good place for me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I feel like, I feel like sometimes I need a manager for social media. Cause it's like, for me, it's like, if I go on like Facebook now, I know Facebook's a little bit more, I guess, secluded. Cause you can always put it like privacy settings, but it's like, you know, if you have a shitty day, I'm like, oh, okay, let's write a post about how today was shitty. And you might delete it three days later. Like, I'm not like, just say the most popular person where like, you're going to get 50 likes. But to me, it's like, all right, this kind of helped me get through it. If one person like likes it or like send you a message, be like, hey, like understand what you're going through. You're like, that's all, that's all I wanted. I just wanted one yeah. person. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And if that's, if that's your way to get the, I understand uh, what yeah. you're going through, then like totally do it. If, if social media is what you need to reach out, then heck yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just, I guess I'm just lucky that my mom is yeah, it, outside the door, you know? <laughs> so I can, I just go to her um, yeah. and she'll, fair, she'll make in, me feel better yeah. than any, any Facebook message will. Yeah. I feel like in fairness, like, you know, I'm sure it's like a loving relationship with your parents, but I, I do find it funny. Cause I think when we were stumbling across to set up this interview and of course, you, you, like I said, we, it's like a Tinder date. You just do a bit of research, but I love how you had one where it was like F-150 is a year old. You had some kind of beer I think in your hand or like a cider and like your mom, I think, yeah, your mom was like, is that, is that beer or something? And you're like, relax, mom. It's like, it's not the good kind or whatever. And I was oh, just like, oh, yeah. just slide, mom sliding in there to basically tell her little, tell the daughter like, Hey, what are you doing? Like, Hey, <laughs> relax. I wonder. Cause 
Yeah. I mean, there's been one post where she said, um, are you going to move out? Um, <laughs> I don't remember that one though, but I'll look it up. You, yeah. Like, there. so I, I think I'll help you out. Cause it's like one where you're listening to F-150 in the background. I think it's like a year old and you're dancing around in the kitchen, I think. And it's like some kind of, you're drinking like a, a beer oh. or cider. And she had commented something like, is this, this kind of beer? And you're like, no, don't worry. It's not the good kind. Or like, relax. And I was like, oh, here's mom basically saying like, I don't care how big you get. You're still, I'm st you're still. I remember this. Hold on. Where's mom? Do, 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 do. I don't know. Where my oh, is that you drinking a bud? There you go. Oh, at the second wedge. Cause the second wedges are local brewery. Yeah. So then my mom was like, are you drinking a bud? Um, <laughs> But I wasn't. I it's it's airport beer mom. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I like how though that she's like keeping like she still has tabs there. She's trying to I, call me out in front of our local brewery. The people <laughs> who support my music. They're like, let's yeah. ruin Robin's career. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another one that you had that I thought was really cool because you know, to get people like to get parents involved or to get people involved in like some of these videos is interesting. But I like how it's like when you did sign with Warner Music Nashville, and it's the most I, I, I can't stand the song, but I get that it's humorous, but it's like the no, 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 no. And it's like, yeah. you're sitting in the background. Like, I'm like, yeah, of course she's 25 years old. She's enjoying life here at home. And it's like the, the two parents are like, so like utterly pissed. They're like, so this, this mother signs with Warner music in Nashville and she's still on our couch. Like, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's hilarious. It's funny. Cause my mom's like, yeah, you should move out. Um, mm -hmm. But with the pandemic, she's like, but it's pointless now. And then my dad, the whole, like ever since I was young, my dad's like, please never leave. Just stay forever. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, no, I love, my mom loves, loves getting involved. She loves watching my follower count. Um, she oh, wow. always updates me on how many followers I have. Um, she loves it. She has a blast reading comments and everything. That's going to do it for this episode of Topin Tonight. Our thanks to Robin Ottolini for coming on to the show. Remember... You can find past, present, and future episodes on TobinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying thank you for listening and good night.